Recently, I visited the Glen H. Curtis Museum in Hammondsport, New York. It's a small village located in between Keuka Lake and the Southern Tier. A century ago, it was a productive town home to Glen Curtis, an industrialist who pioneered motorcycles and aviation. They had a lot of cool exhibits, like a JN4, a whole part of the floor where locals can show off their classic cars. But the one that intrigued me the most was this really old bike with a V8 attached to it. And there is a fascinating story behind it. I'm not going to go deep into the life of Glenn Curtis, but I will give a rundown. He was born in Hammondsport in 1878, and was known for being quiet and humble throughout his life. One of his early jobs was being a bicycle courier for Western Union. Back then, the bike market was in transition from the penny farthing to the safety bike. The penny farthing was dangerous because the seating position was high up and a collision could end up with the rider being flung over the handlebars, resulting in fatal injuries, in contrast with the safety bike the immediate ancestor to almost all modern bikes, and it made a great platform to play around with. He got into bike racing in 1896, and in 1899 he bought out the bike shop that he was racing for, establishing his first bike shop in town. His interest in engine building started when he ordered a kit from E.H. Thomas Motor Company out of Buffalo, New York. It was the biggest manufacturer of single-piston air-cooled engines at the time, but Curtis was disappointed when it arrived as a cast with no ignition carburetor or instructions, so he sought the help of a local machinist to finish the job, and that was enough to inspire him to design and eventually build his own engines, though initially they were intended for use in balloons. Curtis set an early record going up against the other major competitor at the time, Indian Motorcycles, during a race in Yonkers, New York in 1903. By 1907, Curtis had gone deep into engine building. He created the Curtis B8, which was one of the earliest V8s ever built. It weighed 150 pounds, was 269 cc's, and contained a 90 degree F head design that was intended for powering more aircraft, which it would succeed in doing one year later on Curtis's June Bug, the first sustained flight powered by his own engine, earning him the first Scientific American Cup ever awarded. On the bike, he designed the intake to be dual carbureted, which gave it 40 horsepower. On January 24, 1907, at Ormond Beach in Florida, a few miles north of Daytona Beach, he made his fastest land record attempt. The judges agreed to give him two miles to get up to speed, one mile to actually break the record, and two miles to slow down and stop. To house the V8, he had to custom fabricate the entire bike chassis, made of steel tubing around the engine. With the engine equipped, it totaled up to 275 pounds. To steer without reaching over the hot engine, extended handlebars were used. The only suspension on the bike were two seat springs, the rear wheel was directly driven off the V8 using a drive shaft with this differential gear sticking off the end that drove the rear hub. A chain driven rear hub would be destroyed by the power of the V8. That was enough to get him up to 136.27 miles per hour. This run broke every land and air speed record up to that time. He broke the train record. He broke the automobile record, which was set by a Stanley steamer at Daytona almost a year before. The air record until then was held by the Wright Flyer 3, which was set two years before in Dayton, Ohio, hitting 37.85 miles per hour. Curtis would hold the record until 1911, when the Blitzen Benz driven by Bob Berman would surpass the Curtis V8 and hit 141.7 miles per hour at Daytona. In 1920, the FICM sanctioned the first official record, but Curtis's motorcycle record would hold for another decade after that until August 31, 1930 when the official record finally surpassed that of Curtis's. He also died around one month earlier, still knowing that he set one hell of a record. Upon hitting the top speed, he was quoted as saying, Riding an eight-cylinder motorcycle is not likely to become very popular, but it satisfied my speed craving. He would be right about the lack of development and popularity in V8 motorcycles, and that V8 that he used, the Curtis B8, was put into production and sold for $1,500 per unit, but sold poorly. Eventually, the B-8 would be developed into the OX-5, which was the first mass-produced American aircraft engine. It produced 90 horsepower and would have a lasting legacy in American aviation as the power plant of the Curtis JN-4. The JN-4 Jenny was developed for the United States Army Air Service as a trainer aircraft during World War I, but in the following decade it saw widespread civilian use, along with powering the new Swallow, Pitcairn PA-4, and the Travel Air 2000, among other aircraft. 
The OX-5 was also used as the power plant of the first race car built by an 18-year-old Soichiro Honda. The Curtis Honda, as it is now called, was entered into the 5th Japan Automobile Competition in November 1924. It won the race with Shinichi Sakakibara driving, who was the brother of the owner of the shop that Honda worked at, Art Shokai. The main story is a bit anticlimactic, since Curtis really wanted to build the fastest bike just to be the fastest, and move units based entirely on that achievement. But this single bike and successful land speed attempt were both very influential in the entire world of transportation for the following decades to come. 